Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing today? Good. How are you? Oh, how are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Y'all ready for a good show? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Super excited. Very Absolutely. Excited. And so we got a power couple on today. So it's it, it's it's up there with what the the Jay Z and Beyonce's and all the other power couples out there in the world. So we're super excited to have them on. So without further ado, Kiana, please introduce today's guest. So as Chief said, today's guests are a dynamic couple. He is a Bronze Star Medal recipient with published photography in some of the world's most prestigious publications. She is a television personality and entrepreneur. They're here today to give us the inside scoop on their relationship and career success. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Jeremy Locke and Deandra Simmons. Hey. Hi. Hi there. Hey, Jeremy and Deandre, it's an honor to have you with us today. Uh, can, you, can you let our viewers know where you're dialing in from? Yeah, we're dialing in from Dallas, Texas. And, and Chief, I know that you said power couple. I don't know about power couple, but maybe just an in love couple. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, listen, he, he's going for the he's going for the cool points for the beginning of the interview, man. You got the we got about thirty more minutes of this, so. <laughs> no, he's just been on vacation now. for two weeks, so he's got to give a compliment starting right out of the gate. I'll tell you. Oh, that. oh yeah, yeah. That, that <laughs> makes, that makes <laughs> Working my way that to better it. things. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, we are so excited you guys are here with us today. And Jeremy, we appreciate your service and sacrifice to our country. You're a Bronze Star, uh, you're a Bronze Star Medal recipient and seven-time military photographer of the year. You know, casual, just casual awards, no big deal. Um, but what inspired <laughs> you to join the Air Force and begin a career in photography? Um, great question, Emily. It, it, is, it was casual actually how I, how I got into the military. College politely asked me to leave, uh, wasn't doing too good. Uh, work in construction, guys I was working with had to go back into jail on the weekends. And I was like, man, there's gotta be something better. However, I loved an honest day's work for an honest day's pay and working with your hands and seeing something that you, you put your effort into being built. But it still wasn't wasn't where my heart was. So I joined the military to be an X-ray technician, do four years, get out, and uh, have a great career. Well, of course, we all know the military. You know they they'll put you where they want you. So I became a uh, imagery processor. That's the guy who worked in the dark rooms processing and printing uh, satellite imagery to spy plane footage. And photographers from all over the world were dropping their film off. They're traveling to Africa, to Asia. I'm like, man, I would love to be traveling. So I picked up a camera, started teaching myself, and, and had some amazing mentors. And it wasn't until I truly found out through my mentors the true power of an image. Just think of it, one eight thousandths of a second, not 10 seconds of video, one eight thousandths of a second can change the world. And I was hooked. So, so did you get a good tan? You, 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 I'm assuming you couldn't get a really good tan in a darker room. I, 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 we had to get you out <laughs> into some. <laughs> it was, believe me, it was a lot of chemicals. <laughs> Not the right ones, though. <laughs> And so, Jeremy, your photographs tell the stories of so many people. You captured the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, providing a candid look into the lives of warfighters and civilians in those countries. And the New York Times recently released a story on Sunday, actually, entitled The Secret Pentagon Photos of the First Prisoners at Guantanamo Bay, which features a lot of your photos that you took during that time. So what was it like documenting that experience? And Deandra, how do you feel when you view Jeremy's photos? I'm gonna let her go first on this because I'm anxious to hear this. Oh my 
<laughs> well, you know, I particularly, I particularly like to view the ones of me, except the fact that he doesn't like to Photoshop. <laughs> she's, she's my hardest client. Um, no, actually, when I see Jeremy's photos, because I'm an artist and he's an artist, and for me, um, images, whether it be on screen or in a photo, always move me to think about what is behind the image. So for instance, one of the, some of the images that when we first met really moved me were the images in Haiti of the earthquake of trying to feed the people, give them water to save those people and just the desperation and how that must have felt for them at that time. Uh, and Jeremy said that was the only time in his life where he was truly scared because he thought he was going to be trampled. And, um, you know, he's been deployed, what, five times or something. So mm -hmm. Just every single image I look at evokes a different feeling, a different passion, a different inspiration. And some of the people can judge, oh, I can't believe you're taking photos of that. But we need these historical, the historical documentation uh, of right. what happens in the military. That's so important. And because I, I kind of got into it this weekend on social media on the New York Times because somebody was saying, you know, not such nice things about my husband. And I thought, you know, that's his job. And in because you are able to speak freely, you know, he he works, so he does his job so you can say what you want to say about it. But at the same time, it's very necessary for us to see what's going on in the world, what our military is doing, right or wrong, doesn't matter, no bias. He takes photos without bias. I love that. He doesn't put, um, you know, his thought process, he, he thinks about the image, but he doesn't say in his mind what he wants to say. It's let, he lets you make your decision. So great question. You know why I was quiet through all that? I, you guys are the first ones that ever asked that. So it was absolutely like I would get a little teary eyed hearing my wife talk about my work like that. And that's the yeah. first time you've done that um, publicly. I mean, she'll tell me, yeah, that's a good photo. But I, I love that. And I loved hearing that. Ultimately, you know, the, the work I've done in the places I've traveled, um, I look at it as the greatest honor to document my brothers and sisters out doing what they're doing um, so their families can see it. Not only are we the eyes and ears of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and on-scene battlefield commanders, but we're also there for the families and, and to see what they're doing was just the, the greatest honor. Um, you know, a lot of these images that we're looking at are on my website. This one in particular uh, was in Ramadi. Uh, it was during the Battle of Ramadi, and uh, we were in a firefight. Um, we, after the firefight was over, we run to this guy's aid who I think got hit in the crossfire. Um, we actually also had a soldier got hit in his back, and uh, he made it out, made it through, but uh, I learned later in the years that uh, he was succumbed to suicide. So his family was very interested in and uh, what happened that day and all the photos. Mm -hmm. But just just an honor to sit there and and be able to to share what I see on the battlefield and what our brave men and women are doing. And and at no, what cost? No, absolutely. This, and, and this are... image. No, this, go ahead. I want to, I'm sorry, fine. Chief. So this, this image is very, special to me and it doesn't look like much but if you guys remember the famous photographer eddie adams he is the guy who photographed the Viet Cong being executed in the streets he was out in afghanistan um working for parade magazine and and putting a, a, a face on the american soldier and the funny thing about this was i was there helping gripping for him and in between shoots i think the 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 soldier there is having a cigarette and I'm taking shots and he comes over to me and goes, Hey kid, you go, you know, you can't release any of those photos until mine come out. <laughs> one of the greatest days, one of the greatest experiences working with, uh, working with such an amazing individual, Eddie Adams, who now hosts the workshop. He's since passed away, but his memory and honor still live in workshops that teach, teach young photographers. Oh man, that's, that's awesome. Awesome. And, and, uh, you know, just thank you for, for, you know, documenting these stories because behind every photo, there's a story, right. And, uh, and, and like you said, that, that there's, there's families that probably want to know this story or want to get more information about it. And you're able to provide that. That's, that's amazing. And it's also amazing the support you have from your wife. Uh, you know, not only are you, you know, 
out on vacation, but she's out here battling internet internet trolls on the weekend. Why are you <laughs> like on your behalf? And so you know, that's, well, Chief, that's, uh, the one thing I'm known for, good and bad, is being direct. I'm very direct. So once you mess with my family, you're going to hear about it from me on the other side, and it's not necessarily Absolutely. nice all the time. But you know, I just was very, I was disappointed because I'm so proud of my husband, and. It's not the person said something, you know, it's not like he went out there and took these photos for fun. He did this as part of his job. That's what his yeah. job is to do is to show what is happening. Now, you can make a decision on your own whether you agree or don't agree. That's fine. But don't judge the, you know, the message, the person who took the photo because that's his job. I mean, that's just exactly. where and then judge me on top of it because I'm a horrible person because he took the photo. I mean, it's just <laughs> stupid. I mean, you know. Chief, That's all I'm going to say about that. Chief, <laughs> Chief, I always say that it's easier to go to war than to, to mess with my wife. <laughs> and I will say that right there, Deandra, is why you are my favorite cast per, cast member on Real Housewives Thank in you. Dallas. Like, I was like, oh, I love this woman. Just tells it how it is. But in such a still, like, classy way still. Like, I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I don't want to be... Yeah, I don't want to meet Deandra in the dark alley at all. So I'm, I'm going another way. <laughs> I will always support our, our service members, our men and women in the military, because they give us the freedom that we have in this country and people to understand the sacrifices that they make, how long they're gone from their families, uh, the jobs that they have to do. Um, and, you know, there's we, we work with so many different organizations. We just had carry the load here at our house two weeks ago. We cooked for them uh, during the march. They came and had lunch with us and dinner. And just to, to see those people and talk to them and hear those stories and, and the stories of sacrifice, we must never, ever forget that in this country. We must never forget what these people have given with their lives and, and you all as well. So that's what I want to keep telling this story and supporting um, our military. It's very important for us both as a couple. Um, and that's pretty much our mission um, and our initiatives with charitable giving as well. Well, no, we de absolutely appreciate you. And, and Jeremy, you also photographed the hunt for Osama bin Laden. So uh, even just thinking about that, that, that's just crazy in my brain. So how, how do you keep your composure while trying to document such a such an important mission? That was uh, <clears throat> that was the, the last time we were very close to Osama bin Laden. We were up in the Tora Bora Mountains. We just uh, J dammed a cave system and uh, we were up there trying to see if we could take DNA and, and find out if we really got him. Obviously we didn't, and many years later we actually did catch him. Chief, I can tell you to, to keep my composure, it's, you know, in the military, when it sucks, it sucks, but you just, you gotta be that guy who's, who's humping around with the first guy in front of you to, I won't go past the last guy. And, and again, what's important is sharing those stories that what our brave men and women are doing. I can tell you on that, the most memorable thing that I had happen to me was the special forces guys that I were with uh, got some chickens and it was the best chicken <laughs> I've ever eaten in my life. I was so hungry, <laughs> eating the marrow out of the bones. That's, that's really what I remember the most out of that mission. <laughs> Man. I I couldn't even imagine because I know you got you guys got to go in some really extreme conditions, uh, and, and I don't know if if they got um, you know MREs or or anything else. They're just eating off the off the the land or whatever the case may be. But yeah, uh, I can imagine having a piece of chicken would be uh, an amazing like milestone in in the mission. <laughs> it's the best chicken I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't and, do that far, um, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there's, the cook, there's the cook sitting right next to you, right? Right. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> and then, Jeremy, since retirement, you've created amazing art. Your photography has been displayed and honored in well-known publications. Of all the times that your work has been recognized, what has been most the most the your most memorable spotlight experience? And then, Deandra, what is your favorite photograph that Jeremy has ever taken? So the most memorable circumstance or situation, I always like to say I haven't had it yet. I'm, I don't want to get complacent. I love every day opening the door, walking outside my front door and seeing this beautiful planet that we live in. 
I'm very fortunate to work with a lot of military organizations. Um, and I, and I try to give back in that way. I want to stay surrounded by my military brothers and sisters. So I work for a lot of organizations. One of the, the last things we did was, uh, in August, I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, uh, with a bunch of wounded veterans. Um, 12 of us went up, nine of us made it to the top and, it was through an organization called Sheepdog. And to be able to be on this journey with these gentlemen and, and uh, make it, it was, it was incredible. This is coming down. We're at the top. Um, this is a double amputee who made it all the way up and, and is coming down. Just, just an incredible thing. So I, I don't think I have a favorite situation yet. Um, I just get so excited about what's my next project. Um, one of my, my recent projects too, that I'm, it's an ongoing project is uh, looking at different cultures around the world. Uh, one of my favorite places is India. Um, that's where kind of Deandra and I fell in love. If you can spend 13 day, or 30 days in a tent with a beautiful woman where the bathrooms <laughs> flush right down behind you, you better marry that woman. Oh, yeah, you better absolutely. marry her. And so that's what I did. <laughs> but uh, we actually made, did an homage uh, to our wedding. We've created a beautiful India book. And, and it was really to, and I hope your listeners think about this. Our book was made to inspire other couples to go out and explore this beautiful world we live in. I know we hear bad, bad, bad all the time. Um, but man, there's so much beauty, so much good in this world. And you just have to be willing to go out and find it. So in India, I've been working about two years now. Um, had to take a two-year hiatus, but it's uh, on the cabs in Calcutta, India. These yellow cabs are ambassador cabs. And um, in 14 years, Uber has come in and started taking over. And in 14 years, these cabs will be gone and it'll all be Uber cabs. So it's just a slice of life in our world um, where you're meeting beautiful people and and you're having fun while you're shooting it. That's why she thinks I'm always on vacations <laughs> because I'm having fun doing doing what I'm, I love. Listen, I don't I don't tell my wife when I'm having fun either because it, then she gets mad because she's not there. So it's you know I, I can't I'm not allowed to have fun without my wife apparently. Chief, one of my old mentors told me, and I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but he see words of advice. He he goes, never whistle when you pack. Never use your real name on the road and always, always, always come back for love. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. And Emily, so you asked what my favorite photo is. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you have, I don't know if you guys have this photo, but one of the photos that is extremely haunting as a woman and very telling, and it just says so many things in one photograph is a picture. And I, have had this hanging in my home since Jeremy and I met and I could actually get it from him. It's a woman walking through the streets of Afghanistan and there's nothing in the street. And you know how, if you've been to Iraq or Afghanistan, it's just that sand color and really nothing else. Um, and mud, you know, bricks and things like that. And she's just walking through the street and all you see is her backside and her burqa is flowing out in this beautiful blue color. And just in my head, I'm thinking, what does that say? That says so much about her life, but it also says, you know, the only freedom she has is maybe that wind blowing through her burqa at that one moment. And then she's going into, into this street, into this stark, um, you know, area, what's going to happen to her. I wonder what her family's like. I wonder what her husband's like. I wonder if she has a husband. I wonder how he treats her. I wonder if she's educated, if she can read, if she has the ability to do that, you know, it's just so many things that it evoked for me as a woman and how lucky I am to live in this country and have the freedoms that I do. But to think about these women all over the world, and I was lucky enough to go to Iraq with Jeremy and do um, a mission over there and really see what it was like, um, a little bit of what it was like when he served in the military. So that one photo, the beauty of it and the tragedy of it all in one uh, photograph just captures so much for me. And that will come to our next home as well because we're gonna move pretty soon. Oh, that's incredible. Yes. Emily, and so I Jeremy, think we might be sitting down looking at all my photos tonight because I'm loving this. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, I was, was going to say, 
say, could you send those to us? Because now I really want to see the photo, Deandra, that you were just Absolutely. talking about. Yeah, we want to see that. That's a, yeah, that sounds incredible. I'll put that no, photo it's, uh... on my social media too. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yes. Ooh. <laughs> No, Deandra, that was a great story. And it kind of captures just Jeremy's storytelling ability within his photos. But now he's gone from photography to podcasting. So the Last Letters podcast highlights the stories of a diverse group of people. Um, Jeremy, your episode with World War II Iwo Jima survivor Don Graves is one of my personal favorites. Um, a clip from his interview on your TikTok has already received more than 1.6 million views since Memorial Day. So what inspired you to start this podcast? How do you choose the guests? And DeAndre, will we ever be able to hear your story on his podcast? And Last Letters podcast has been a huge, huge blessing. Um, here I'm that award-winning photographer um, telling stories, but when it comes down to it, it's not a click of the button. It's the audio of these amazing individuals that I get to sit down with and share. Last Letters came about when I was photographing a lot of Medal of Honor recipients and just some amazing people. And you get like 15 to 20 minutes with them, but you don't, you just want to know so much more. And to be able to sit down and, and ask these people about their story is, is just such an amazing gift. And, and to have that conversation where we can all, if we just have that conversation and listen to each other, fully listen to understand and maybe pick up a little bit of advice. Now with Don Graves, his, his went viral. He's amazing, amazing individual. We're so blessed. I think we're up to like 3 million now up, up on our TikTok. But um, one of the things we're trying to do, one of the things that he wanted to do, he was a 97 year old Iwo Jima survivor that wore a flamethrower. I mean, it's incredible. And one of the things he has left to do in life is he's talking about he would love to go over to Ireland and and drink a drink a beer in a pub and sing Danny Boy. So we're going to try to make that happen for him. We're going to awesome. actually try to see what we can do to get him over there singing. But uh, Last Letters has been a huge blessing. And it's myself and producer Scott. We're a two man team, not funded, but enjoying and loving. When the passion is there, um, my, my hair just stands up on that. As far as whether or not I will do a last letter, it's been very uh, difficult for me to kind of mull that over in my head because I wouldn't want to say things on the podcast that would be cliche. And I listen to these very um, deep, insightful people talk about this great wisdom that they're leaving the world. And I think, oh, I don't really have anything like that to impart. And then I said to Jeremy, I said, I don't really think I've ever done anything with my life, to be honest, anything that counts. <laughs> and I would wanna have a legacy. And I mean, I know that's, that's not true, but I feel like there's such incredible onus on my shoulders and burden on my shoulders to say and do and present the right thing because it is my husband's podcast and I wouldn't wanna disappoint him. And I would want to, leave a story and a letter that was very truly meaningful and would leave someone thinking, oh, maybe if I took this road in my life or made this decision, I would, you know, have a little more happiness or a little, I don't know, something would change in their life. And to me, it's just a lot of personal responsibility that I'm terrified of failing at. And I think a lot of people in my, in my case too, like if, you know, acting, I've acted my whole life and that's a very, a lot of actors are very insecure. And so I feel like that's probably my, that part of me coming through, but I just feel such heavy burden about it. And, um, cause I know people will be listening because see so you guys, see so you guys. And that's, that's the beauty of last letters podcast. It's, it's, it's not about that. She's taking it on as a responsibility. It's not, I just want to have a conversation with somebody that I know nothing about <laughs> and let's just talk about life. But you know a lot about me, so you can write my last letter. <laughs> yeah. And then you can interview me. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think we all kind of uh, battle with insecurities and doubt and, 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 and doubt kind of creeps into our lives. And uh, we just all have to remember we're, we're all we all bring something to the table in this in this world. And mm. and we're all part of this big ecosystem that uh, that we all you know, when people say that I'm self-made and all that other stuff, it kind of 
it, I don't know, it, it, it kind of triggers me a little bit because uh, we're a social, social, uh, we're social creatures and, and mm-hmm. we all need each other to, to, to get to wherever we're trying to get to in life. And so um, it, there's, there's no job too small or, or no, no job too that, uh, that, you know, the impact you have on people, uh, you know, is, is up to you, you know, whether it's positive or negative, but yeah, you, your story is just as important as, as my story or, or uh, Don Grave's story or all the different things. So uh, yeah, they just see if you more. get it. No, no, absolutely. And I'm putting the personal invite out to you. I'd love to have you on last letters. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I would love to love to be on, on last letters. The people, so I've had quite a few, um, uh, you know, big personalities on my show. And people always ask me, who's your favorite guest? Who's your favorite guest? Well, I got a chance to talk to a, a few Medal of Honor recipients as well on Chief Chat. Mm-hmm. And I literally could just sit there and just let them just go. Like, I don't even have to ask a question. Um, just the amazed by, because uh, most of them, they were like 21, 22, 19 years old when they did this heroic act. And, you know, me thinking of myself at 19, uh, I, you know, I guess about, I, I was in the military at that time. So, uh, if I was put in that position, I was ab- absolutely do it. But then you kind of peel back that layer and be like, man, you were 19 years old and we had that type of responsibility at 19 years old. And and, and the fact that he had a flamethrower, I thought that was pretty cool too. So I, I had uh, Woody Wilson on. Uh, he was a Marine uh, Medal, of Honor, uh, Medal of Honor recipient. And yeah, he, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just amazing to sit down and just pick their brains uh, and, and let them kind of tell their stories and just sit back and be like, man, that is, that's crazy to think that at 19 year olds, you would have the you know, the foresight to to turn that switch on and 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 be selfless and, you know, risk your life for a whole bunch of people that you literally probably just met two months ago. Right. Or three months ago or whatever the case may be. Uh, so it's just, you know, I, I love being in the military. I love the family that I've I've, I've you know, ad- adopted uh, in this in this military. And it, it's been amazing. So thank you for kind of bringing that back in my head. I, I think that was a, a, a very, you know, the podcast allows me to to talk to some very interesting people, and I, and I really appreciate it. And and so let's we're gonna switch gears a little bit because you kind of mentioned that uh, you all were in India uh, with with a uh, with not not too good of a sanitation, uh, and and I'm assuming that's where you guys first met. So can you? And I know there's like three sides to every story. There's a there's your side, and there's her side, and there's somewhere in the middle. There's maybe some truth, uh, but we would love to hear both sides on how you all met. Sweet. I'll start with this one. This is my <laughs> side. So I was up in Arlington, Virginia, teaching a military uh, photography workshop, and and she comes oh, in. She comes in through the door. Me and a couple of the other instructors are out having drinks, and she comes in the door and and uh, had this cute little hat on. And one of my mentors said, "Hey, would you mind taking a photo with helping? He's helping some students out." She's like, "All right, I guess." And and then she comes out. He introduces her to us and we're sitting at a table and she sits down right next to me. And what do you do when a pretty girl sits next to you? You get up and, <laughs> and buy him a beer. So I went up and got him a beer. Well, wouldn't you know the next military guy sits in my seat? So I had to work my way all the way around uh, the whole night just to talk to her again. We ended up talking, um, got up to the room. She texted something. I, and I wish to this day I knew what it was. And my buddy goes, text her this really quick. If she, if she, replies back within 30 seconds, you're in there. And I did. I think it took her like 10, 15 seconds to reply back. You've never seen a grown man jump on a hotel bed. She (laughs) texted back, she texted back, she texted back. (laughs) And then Chief, from there, I just dropped game and that was it. That's it, that's it, man. That's. I I believe it. I'm I'm there with you. I'm here. (laughs) The only, I don't have any really... Um, you know, different uh, version of how we met. We actually did meet. I was um, at that time I had my products in Whole Foods and I had a little bit different line and I was doing kind of the meet the maker um, programs. And so I had done like five or six stores that day and I went gone down to the bar to get a glass of wine to take up to my room. And that's when the, this gentleman said, may we take a photo of you? And I was like, oh, I'm so tired. And I thought, OK, I'll do it. You know, it's a military thing. And then he said, well, let us buy you a drink. And I said, no, that's okay. And then I looked over to the table and I saw Jeremy because I, I was really tired. And I'm like, oh, I'm not so tired anymore. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> I all of a sudden had a renewed burst of energy. 
but he did have to kind of move around the table to talk to me. And um, I believe we exchanged numbers. I don't remember. It was my birthday weekend that weekend. And I think I was probably reaching out and saying, are y'all going to be around tomorrow? Because my girlfriends were coming in town because I went to school. I went to college in Virginia. And uh, so a lot of them lived in D.C. and we were going to go out. And I think I was probably saying, hey, do y'all want to meet us out tomorrow night or something like that? I don't remember what the text was, to be honest. She was trying to hook me up with her other friend and I was no <laughs> part of it. <laughs> my other oh, friend my lived man. in proximity to D.C. and I thought it would be easier than a long distance relationship. And um, I was getting out of a relationship at the time, so I wasn't quite ready to jump into another one. But God had a plan for us, and uh, we finally had our first date. That was in March of 2012, and we finally had our first date, and I believe it was in June or July of uh, 2012, and we were married about a, a year later. I'll go with that story. That's a, a good story. A year and a half. We were engaged a year later, and, <laughs> engaged a year later, and then uh, married a year and a half later. Awesome. It, it's special when you find somebody that you know, you're just meant for. And again, you're, you're seeing pictures of our travels. And that's, that's one of the things that we truly enjoy to do is, is share travel and, and experiences with each other. Um, best thing in, that's ever happened in my life. Uh, no photos um, or any other thing can come closer to the love that I have for, for my wife. She's just amazing. Oh, we did have Man. chief and we, we have that, um, that really the commonality of the adventure and the travel because i also traveled quite a bit and went to school in many different countries and so to me it's very important to continue that part of my life i learned so many things about different cultures and jeremy since that's his job it just fit perfectly for me to go and you can think about say we're going to some place where he's taking photos and he wants to get in with the women i can go and talk to the women and we can talk about beauty or cooking or hair care and even if we don't talk, we just show each other, you know, I, like I did with the Himba women, then they feel more comfortable about him coming in and documenting their lives. And so we play, we have a good partnership with that while he's working. I can enjoy, um, you know, my time and working with the women and, and learning about them as well. Yeah. Yeah. So for, for me now, now, you know, we're talking about photography, right? And so my two photographs that I would love to see would be uh, Jeremy eating that that bone marrow on a chicken, uh, because like I said, what, and also seeing his buddy taking a picture of him jumping on on a bed in a hotel room, like that. Those are two images yes, that like I have in my head. Yeah, those are two I'd images like in my head because you can tell when somebody's excited because when they explain it and their face lights up, like those two moments were freaking. His face just lit up on the screen. So uh, I'm seeing the pictures right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> And so, Deandra, you're not a stranger to success in the limelight that comes with it. Um, and we talked earlier before um, we jumped on, but we're all based in Dallas, which is super fun. Mm -hmm. um, and this city, when anyone says Deandra Simmons, everyone knows exactly who you are. Um, is that weird for you that people know who you are? I mean, do you feel like you're just kind of normal, but <laughs> everyone's like, it's Deandra. I feel normal. I think, honestly, before Real Housewives happened, um, my uncle and my father had been um, philanthropists in the city and businessmen that were very well known. So my last name being Simmons um, was something that kind of they just would think, oh, Simmons, is she related to them? So I before I met Jeremy, I chaired a bunch of uh, galas and events and balls and, and did a lot of philanthropic things and then as well as running my business. So I kind of was used to people in Dallas knowing who I was. Now, when Housewives came calling, that was a whole different level. And you really have to have, I would say, the thickest of skins to be on a show like that because it's very difficult. But if Jeremy always said to me, when you do, if we're going to do this, we sat down as a family and talked about it. Look at the golden ring. What is your goal? Because if you just want to be famous, that's the worst thing to ever want and be on a reality TV show because you have to have your priorities in order. So for me, I wanted to build my business. My father had passed away. Um, my mom, you know, unfortunately it showed some of the tension between my mother and myself, which has been really a lifeline issue, but we have worked it out. Um, and then the business was highlighted with having, you know, some of those issues. And I wish 
on, on reality TV, you got to understand you're only seeing what they want you to see. And I'm not saying editing or anything else. You're going to see what they want to show and they want it to be sensational and they want it to be, Oh my God, you know, I can't believe that. But the truth is I have worked since I was, I want to say 12 or 14. I know it's folding sweaters at express when I was not an old, old enough to do it. So, (laughs) and then I waited tables pretty much most of my life, even through, and through school, I worked in the admissions office. So, I worked for the Department of Energy. I've always worked, which I don't think people understood that. They thought I was some just trust fund baby that came along to collect my check. And that that really upset me because my friends that know me really well, they all say, you're one of the hardest working women we know. And that's hands down across the board, they say that. And I do so many different things. And so that was the only thing that you know was difficult on me. And I still get some of those wonderful direct messages, <laughs> the kind direct messages from people about, I can't believe you do this, or I can't believe you know this, and I'm tired of hearing about whining about your family money. And, and that's, it's fine. I just have to, you have to have a thick skin and get on with it. And the great thing is I have a husband that adores me, loves me, and we have a great marriage and that's all good. And I don't have to worry about any of that. Except yeah, he gets so a lot you- of, he gets a lot of inquiries from women on social media. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so would you say you know everything you just said kind of makes sense would you say that's what inspires your personal brand and success is my personal brand and i you actually hit on it emily about my directness is yes i love it I, the, my first word that i had to sit down and define myself and jeremy helped me this was hard it was a six-month project authenticity was my first word so everything i do has to be authentic dynamic, inspiring. I'm a very curious person. And um, let me see if the last, now I forgot the last word, but basically <laughs> those are the, the words that really kind of are my core brand is in authenticity being the first one. Um, my, at, the, at the core of it, that's yeah. honestly who she is. <clears throat> and, and one of the things before she started Housewives, we sat down about it and I said, that it's fine. I, I'm here a hundred percent to support anything and everything you do, but there's gotta be rules. So uh, we had three rules before doing housewives. And what are they? What are three rules? Yeah. Never no, lie. Never lie. Yes. No bashing family. No bashing family. Which is hard because they put, you know, my fight with my mother on TV and that's, that was difficult. And, and always, always, always be who you are. Meaning not you're the same person if you're walking through Walmart than you are on the camera. So the first, a little quick little story, the first time that ever happened, and I saw this is, the, as a military guy, I'm not the breadwinner, which I have been in my previous marriage. And she said that, she, she said that in an interview. And I go, man, I thought we weren't supposed to bash family. And she goes, yeah, but I didn't break rule number two, never lie. I was like, that's why I love you. That's why I love you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I get it. <laughs> so I, I don't love that. I made- Emily, anything I make or do or have my fingers into, so to speak, um, has to be something that I like, that's true to me, that I believe in. I'm not just going to make something because it's trending right now. So, for instance, my skincare line, Hard Night Good Morning, it's aloe vera based. It's natural. It's what I've been doing for 25 years, whether I was making it for myself or then I started to sell it. My mother's a cancer survivor, so we make nutrition products because when she became ill with cancer, she didn't know why she got sick. Then my grandmother had cancer, my aunt. So we just started to develop then natural green foods is our main product, Green Miracle. We still have that to this day and I've made it better. But things that really speak to us in our issues and helping others. So prevention of, of disease or helping you live a healthier life, healthier skin. And then cooking, of course, is my my love, my favorite thing in the world, Jeremy will say. Right? I love to cook. I tell you, we got to stop cooking so much. I'm getting bigger. And that, that's no joke. <laughs> yeah, both of us are getting a little bit bigger because I have to try all these recipes. But those are things I love. So, um, you know, of course, everybody likes, I like fashion a little bit, but it's not exactly my, my passion. Food is much more my passion. <laughs> Same. Yes. <laughs> so you guys talked about what it was like to build up towards Rural Housewives of Dallas. And like Emily and I said earlier, you are a favorite cast member, Deandra. We love you so, so much. <laughs> so what was it like to be on the show? Like, do you feel like you learned anything? Did you feel like you grew as a person? Or maybe your relationship is stronger because you had to kind of come together to battle those trolls and those mean girls? <laughs> 
I definitely <laughs> learned a lot. I mean, I will tell you that if you don't learn from being on a reality TV show, then you, you haven't done it right because you learn to look at yourself and thought, think, oh my gosh, why did I do that? Or, and, and I never blame anything on editing ever because it came out of my mouth. I did it. I'm responsible. I take responsibility for it. And there's a lot of things I did that I sh you know, I'm embarrassed about. That's just the way it goes. But you have to pick up, my dad used to say, pick up your bootstraps and get on with it. And tomorrow is the first day of the rest, or the first day of the rest of your life. So always think about that. Jeremy and I were stronger because he was always my support system. And it made us stronger in our marriage because we always made sure that our marriage was highlighted in a positive light so they couldn't get in and start creating issues for our marriage. Um, but that's it. But that's who we are. Though. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's showing who you truly are. So what you see on camera is what you'll see if you're at our home. Mm -hmm. I mean, so. it, it, you know, you could take an argument and make it into a, a 20 episode series, which is silly because it, the argument may be about, you know, the toothbrush was left out or something. It's dumb. So you just have to realize what you're doing. And there's so many blessings. I will tell you that I'm very grateful that I was able to uh, be on Real Housewives of Dallas. I don't know if it's coming back and I don't know if it comes back. If, if I'll do it, I haven't even thought about that right now. I'm happy to be on hiatus. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I'd love to maybe do something with cooking, but um, yes, I am. It, even to this day, it gave me the ability to talk to people that did get me on the show and came to me and said, you know, I, I'm having problems with my mom and, and how should I deal with it? Or my business, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a young woman. How do I get funding? How did you navigate this? Um, how do you have such a great um, marriage with your husband and how do you deal with having stepchildren in your home? Because we actually have the stepchildren living with us now and, and Keaton lived with us one time before. So it, it's nice to be able to have people that support and then want to talk about it. And I feel like, okay, I can impart something to them because they've seen me and seen my story and it's helpful in a way. Absolutely. And, and Deandra, you, you mentioned, um, that you have a passion for cooking and so in food and, and I also have I also share the same passion for food, but I'm on the <laughs> eating side. I'm on the eating side of it and not the cooking side of it. So uh, so but uh, the fans can can find you sharing easy and delicious recipes on your YouTube show, uh, Simply Simmons. Uh, when did you develop yes, your love can. for cooking? And Jeremy, could you let us know what your favorite dish prepared by Deandra uh, and you you already spoiled it for chicken. You can't say chicken because you've already <laughs> labeled number one no. chicken <laughs> being on the mountains, Chief, mountains of Afghanistan. It's so hard because we don't have set meals, right? It's we we eat so many different things, and the, everything she cooks is amazing. My favorite, I'm hoping someday, will be a blueberry pie. She will not cook okay. me a darn blueberry pie. <laughs> but, you know, when the Carry the Load guys came over, Matt Hughes, the UFC fighter, was over here. She made him a blueberry pie, not me. Oh, no. What? Wow. Okay. <laughs> you know, we don't, I, I don't know if y'all are originally from the South or not. I say y'all because I'm from Texas. But yeah, I'm, I'm from blueberry Louisiana. Pie is, blueberry pie is not a thing down here. That's a northerner thing. And Jeremy grew up in Ohio. So, of course, they ate blueberry pie. We don't eat blueberry pie down here. So, it's Great. not my favorite. And the other thing is, I have to tell you a little secret that nobody knows. My father owned a blueberry farm when I was growing up, one of the largest ones in the South. And so we had truckloads of blueberries and freezers full of blueberries. And so I kind of got blueberried out, to be honest with you. I didn't know that. <laughs> she, is over, she is over blueberries. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> I look like that kid in Willy Wonka at the Swallowed the Blueberry or something. Yeah. <laughs> Violet. Violet. <laughs> I feel like that sometimes because we had, I had a lot of blueberries growing up. <laughs> but my uh, love of cooking, Emily, my love of cooking, to answer your question, really started from a young age. My father uh, was part, my biological father was from Louisiana, Texas, but also Louisiana and part Cajun. So he was a fabulous cook. My grandmother was a fabulous cook. My mother's mother was a great cook. My aunt, every woman in my family, so all family gatherings were all about food and cooking. And so I decided that was something I was into as well because I like to eat. So I developed my own recipes. I'm much more of a savory cook than I am a sweets and dessert person. That's another reason. I don't make a lot of desserts. You can ask Jeremy. I make more savory things. So I can do it. It's just not my favorite thing. 
<laughs> well, I was going to say too, if you ever want to uh, start teaching other people how to cook, my, uh, my partner, um, he boils spaghetti for about three minutes <laughs> and then calls it good. <laughs> And that was the first oh, no. meal he ever, he, that was the first meal he ever made for me. And I was like, oh, it's so good and crunchy. Like, so <laughs> if you're ever looking to teach someone, because I've tried and I, I can't, he doesn't understand that you can't boil spaghetti for three minutes and it will be. Did he read the there. package, Emily? No, no, he throws it out. Oh, and here's another thing he does. Oh, this God. is my favorite. When we come home from the grocery store, you guys will love this. Comes home from the grocery store. He opens every jar because when he needs it later, it's easier. He's already done the hard work there. But what he doesn't understand <laughs> is, oh my God. I know, I know. He's so lucky. He is just such a nice guy. He's got a great personality, I promise. But um, he opens, uh, he opened Alfredo sauce that was in a jar and then he puts it in the pantry. We go to use it oh, no, a no. couple days later, all molded. I know. So if you ever mm -hmm. want to start you know teaching people how to move around in the kitchen i will volunteer my boyfriend right now <laughs> yeah I, 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 I got a, my house and I can give you a, a pantry tour and we can talk about the different foods in the pantry <laughs> i just i want you, to i want you to just sit there and watch how he does things in the kitchen it is so fascinating and i'm like you know what he's made it 35 years in life He's still alive and healthy, but oh my goodness. You, I'm going to film it and send it to you. You're going to die. Hey, he's doing something right because you're still right there. Mm -hmm. I know. Hey, Emily. Exactly. Hey, Emily. Let, let me, I'm going to give you a secret, Emily. And uh, you know what? Apology to Emily's other half uh, for kind of divulging the secret. But uh, if we don't do things the right way, then you don't ask us to do it again. And so that's that's a strategic move on his part to say, you know what? <laughs> You, you screw you screw it up. Listen, I don't trust you with it. I won't ever ask you to do it again. And bam, that's off my list of to do my honey do list. So yes, no more spaghetti for the rest spoke, of my life. Spoken like a true professional. I know. Yeah. I was gonna say that makes sense. Cause I, I'm 17 I'm years in. One. I trust me. I'm 17 yeah. years in. So I'm the only one that unloads groceries now. For some reason, he disappears once he brings them into the house. <laughs> so that could be why. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> So, um, Jeremy and Deandra, we have service members um, from all over the world and their families watching and listening right now. Um, what would you like to say to them and, and share with them today? God bless you for doing what you're doing. You you answered the calling. It was in your heart. Um, you're you're in the military. Man, you're the guys that are paving the way for our freedom. And and I know you've heard it time and time and again but but thank you and and behind every good service person there's a loved one that's even stronger backing them and and we truly support and and love you all and i think i said it a little bit before um when i was talking about jeremy's photographs but just thank you so much for everything that you do for us and the freedoms that we are allowed to have in this country because of your service and we will never forget your service and we will always support you as long as I have breath in my body. I will always make sure that our family supports the military. And I know Jeremy feels the same way. So thank you very much. And you're also receiving a lot of love on the live stream. Our viewers have a few questions for you. So Marisa, Jeremy, she wants to know, do you have any people or places on your bucket list to photograph? Um, I do. I, I, you know, a dream of mine is I would love to draw, uh, ride the Trans-Siberian Express from one side to the other, not have any plans and just meet people along the way and hop off and live in their village for a little bit. Um, that's kind of like the top of my bucket list. Um, Iceland, I'm looking at, at sharing. We've never been to Iceland, so sharing that journey and that experience with my wife as we travel around to different villages and, and learning the culture. So that would be my two bucket lists. Ooh, no, that's exciting. Now, Devin also says he wants to know your story. He would love to know your story. Maybe the tables can turn a little bit and you can be interviewed on Last Letters podcast. Maybe that's what <laughs> yeah, you're doing. There you go. <laughs> I agree, Devin. I agree 100%. <laughs> well, just so you know, mine will come after Deandra's. Oh. But, um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, 
on our 50th episode, um, I interviewed my dad and uh, to sit down, man, what a blessing to sit down across from your father, your hero, and, and have that conversation was incredible. I do find it, it is my responsibility too, and I will. Um, it'll just be, we're still very new in the process and it'll be a little ways out. But yes, I do and I will write one. Thanks, Devin, for asking that. Now, Connor also wants to know, how do you think your experience with the military helps you lead others in your professional and life pursuits now that you've retired? That's a great question. Um, it, it, God, the military teaches you how to be a leader, but it also teaches you how to be a follower and, and how to recognize when, when you need those roles. Um, the military taught me to be inquisitive. You know, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to see what's on the other side of the fence over there. Um, and it gave me the love of humanity. Um, documenting the wars, I mean, it's, it's horrible. There's, there's things that you'll never stop seeing. But there's also a beauty of humanity that you'll find if, if you know where to look, look for it. So I think that's the greatest thing that the military has, has taught me. And, and I will say one of the strongest things that I've taken away is to pass on my knowledge as freely as it was given to me. That's a motto that throughout my combat camera buddies and my mentors has always taught us is to always give, always give back as freely as it was given to you. And I live and die by that today. No, and one awesome. last comment. It's from Scott. He wants to know about your first time coming to Dallas. So you're from Ohio. You moved to Dallas, your wife's hometown. What was that experience like? And do you guys have any funny stories about that? The waterfall. <laughs> the waterfall. Yeah. yeah. So, so Scott, thanks for asking. Um, <laughs> honestly, the very, so I didn't know much about my wife. Um, wasn't a big, I was always a Cowboys fan. Came here to uh, Texas, Dallas, Texas to meet her and came to the house. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I, I don't belong here. I don't belong here. Uh, next thing I know, she flips the switch and a waterfall comes out of the uh, the wall in the <laughs> pool. And I'm like, that's it. I'm just a military. I, I have nothing to offer her. So she went to the or something like that. I called my mom immediately and go, mom, mom, this is a situation I'm in. I got to get out of here. <laughs> my mom gave me the best advice ever. She said, Jeremy, you have everything in the world to offer this woman. Grab the bulls, grab the bull by its horns and see where it takes you. And and it's take me to the best thing that I've ever, ever, ever had in my entire life. That is not the waterfall? Uh, no, not the waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you, when, you said boom, when you said boom, my mind went somewhere else. So I was like, okay, gotcha. We, we're, I'm, I'm back on track. <laughs> but uh, I got a couple comments on my page as well. So uh, Dora Trillo said that, uh, hi, Deandra, uh, she's one of your biggest fans. And she also said that she recognized Jeremy when he was shooting at the, the Army Air Force game here in Fort Worth. And so yes, we get a chance yes. to, yeah. So we get a chance to go to that game as well. Uh, and, and Dora works for the exchange as well. And so uh, uh, we, I was walking around in my service dress uniform, uh, a, little, a little bummed because my Air Force uh, lost to the Army on that game. It was, it was a really good game though, really good game. And also uh, Angela Santos, um, so Angela Santos is, um, you know, she's she's amazing. She's a she's a, a tech sergeant here at the exchange, uh, but she's also my public affairs NCO. So she she's very talented photographer. Uh, she manages my social media and all that other stuff. So I knew once we had you on that she was going to tune in because uh, she's combat camera and she got a chance to uh, film at the inauguration. Uh, not the, this past one, but, uh, but Trump's inaugur inauguration. But she just takes some just magnificent photos, and she's really, really, um, you know, she, she loves the work that you've done. So I just want to make sure I read her comment. She said, you guys are amazing. Thanks for being on the show and uh, doing what you do for our military community. Thank you. Angela, Angela is amazing. She's one of my combat camera sisters. Mm -hmm. um, her work from the inauguration was incredible. 
incredible. And and it's it's people like her that I'm not saying it was me, but again, we pass on freely as it was given to us. And she's reaping those benefits just as I did when I was a young photographer. And and she passes it on to this day. And you just love seeing that legacy continue. And she's amazing. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for paying that forward for her uh, to kind of take that torch and pass it on to somebody else. Um, but we're well, we're really excited to see what's ahead for both of you. So uh, are there any new horizon that you can maybe give us uh, a little heads up on? Well, as far as um, my career, uh, I'm very excited. I just did a couple of films, one with Greg Ellis, who did Carter High School, and Vivica Fox was in that movie. And this one's called My Dear. It's going to be in theaters in September, and it really addresses traumatic brain injury and suicide. And my biological father committed suicide. So for me, it was very um, important to be in this movie and be a part of it. And I I'm looking forward to sharing that movie in September with everyone. And then I did a Lifetime movie called Brutal Brainwash that'll be out, I don't know, sometime on Lifetime soon. And then I have the Hard Night Good Morning product line that's expanding with two new products, a resurfacing product and an oil product. I have perfume, I have eyeglasses, and Simply Simmons is continuing on. And um, we're going to have some food products. And I'm also working on a concept with a celebrity chef for another show. So keep posted and stay tuned about that. I'm very excited. We've been working very diligently on, on that project. As for me, um, my, my head's down. I just want to fall more in love and with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to, uh, to keep, keep growing last letters. I think it's, it's amazing and beautiful. And, and, you know, we just love to give back however we can and where we can. And, and maybe someday, maybe, just maybe, I'll be a brand ambassador for Hard Night Good Morning. You better be. Awesome. <laughs> well, you got to use the products every day, you know. I mean. On today. Mm-hmm. What's the day? <laughs> and as a reminder for our viewers, you can listen to Last Letters podcast at lastletters.net or on Apple Podcasts. Be sure to catch Deandra's Simply Simmons cooking show on her YouTube channel. And where can our viewers um, keep up with all things Jeremy and Deandra? Um, on for last letters, uh, anywhere you consume or listen to your favorite podcasts, you'll you'll hear us. So love that. Um, you know, I have a Facebook Jeremy Locke, uh, Instagram Jeremy T Locke, website Jeremy Locke. But uh, for everything to keep up with us, it's usually Deandra's social media. No, your last letters. Now I don't know if he's he's going to be modest here, but his last letters did go viral, and so on TikTok he is on last oh, letters is on TikTok. Absolutely, check us out on TikTok for sure. And I'm on Facebook, uh, Twitter. I'm on um, Instagram at Deandra Simmons, and then also on TikTok. But if you go there, don't make fun of me because I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the magic of it i actually the, the cooking ones are done by somebody else but if it's not a cooking one i'm doing my best but you know anyway <laughs> i like to make fun of myself <laughs> are there any dance moves? are there any dance moves on on tiktok there's no dance moves yet um and we can't dance. We can't dance. No, we're, we're kidding. <laughs> Dancing was the so we have you have three talents when you're. I have a degree in theater as well as political science. So there's three talents you study in acting. It's dance, it's uh, theater, and it's um, oh, what is it? Singing. Okay, so the singing and the acting. I was okay. The dancing. Oh, God. chief, we're belly bopping Ooh. now. <laughs> All that food she's cooking. We're belly bopping. <laughs> I don't think I'll awesome. be on Dancing with the Stars. Don't don't hold your breath. <laughs> Listen, ne- never say never. Now, never. I've I've seen Dancing with the Stars, and I've seen some people that 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 got like three left feet on there. So, uh, you no. Know, <laughs> yeah. Don't don't count, don't sell yourself too short. Trust me. And and for our our chief chat viewers, uh, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. You can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes. Also, tune in at 2 p.m. on June 23rd when actor Brad Garrett joins the chat. Uh, Deandra and Jeremy, man, it's it's been an awesome conversation, a pleasure to have you with us, just getting to know you uh, and, and your lovely wife uh, a, a lot better. 
and how you all met and just you know like i said i i, I for some reason i I might go to Popeye's after this because I, I just, you put that in my brain. <laughs> you extend that in my brain for this interview, but man, it's, it, it's, a uh, it's amazing. You know, what you all do, um, you know, to, to, to contribute to the world. Right. And so, like I said, you, you've spent your time in the military and, and, and giving back and Deandre, you, you've, you got all these product lines and all these different, uh, ph philanthropy. You know, I'm not going to mess that word up, but I know you're giving back to a bunch of different organizations, include the military, and we could not thank you enough for what you all do for our military community. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here today. And thank you, you for highlighting my husband's work, most importantly, because I'm very proud of him and his work. And I'm so excited for all the things he's doing for the future as well. So thank you for having us today. Yeah. Can you guys keep doing what you're doing? Absolute honor and blessing to be on sharing our story love you guys and and love all your listeners Thank you. all right love you too Thank and, you and so let's be honest. and if you and if you don't mind if you don't mind hanging on so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes after the live uh stream ends but uh again thank you so much uh this means so much to our nation's heroes and their families we wish you all the best and chief chat out <laughs>